Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at DxO's new PhotoLab 6 Elite. And as many of you know, I've been a DxO PhotoLab user for the last couple of years now. I started with PhotoLab 4, then I upgraded to PhotoLab 5, and now courtesy of DxO, I now have PhotoLab 6 Elite. First, I want to show you a few new things in PhotoLab 6. So if you're thinking about upgrading from PhotoLab 5, these are things you can do now that you couldn't do before. Then we're going to do some editing in real time so I can show you some of the features I like to use when I'm editing my photos. And then finally, we'll take a look at the D Prime and D Prime XD, which is really the signature AI noise reduction tool in PhotoLab 6 Elite, which I think is one of the best AI noise reduction softwares on the market. PhotoLab 6 has also introduced a new working color space, meaning it's a much wider color space so we're going to be able to squeeze out more colors and edit more colors in our images so if I switch this image to the new DxO wide gamut you can see that it's more vibrant the colors are more saturated and brighter because we're actually seeing more colors and this ties into the soft proofing feature which is also new this allows us to edit and see as we're editing exactly how this image is going to look on the final media or device. So for example, if this image is just going to be used for the web or inserted into a YouTube video, I would just choose a standard sRGB profile. However, if I know this image is going to be displayed on one of the newer HDR type monitors or televisions, I can see how that's gonna look by switching this to Rec 2020. You can also import ICC profiles, say, for specific printers. So if you want to edit the image and see how it's going to look exactly as printed, you can do that, whether it's your own printer or printers that you might be sending off to. And in the near future, they're going to start to simulate actually different papers and inks as well. PhotoLab 6 has also added several features to help you manage your files better. So for example, in the EXIF data, we have two new metadata fields, the serial number and software version. And serial number is useful for when, say, you have multiple photographers using the same camera at the same event, and you want to separate the photos by camera, thereby telling you which photographer took which image. There's also several new fields in the ITPC information that you can access here as well. Now, if I right-click on an individual image, we also have a new set color label. So I can now add a red label to this image. We also have a new way to organize our images so we don't have to rely, say, on a folder structure of the computer. We can kind of create our own here under projects. So for example, I created one called astrophotography. Let me reset my filters here. And I can group all my astro images into this folder. Or I can create subcategories within a project. So for example, I'm doing a demo for the color wheel and deep prime, and also for the tools and presets for this video. So I created a new project called demo. What I want to do now is added a few images in real time using some of my favorite tools, demonstrating the features so that you can see why PhotoLab is my editor of choice and has been since I discovered it two years ago. So first thing I always do is I just apply the optical corrections and then I crop for compositional reasons and I'm just going to go up here and then let's fix some of the loose ends here like this uh, white pole right there and then this corner here with the road still showing now let's uh, crank up some of the color. So I can do it with vibrancy. But that's not really doing everything I want. So I'm going to go to the color wheel and pick the reds. Because I see a red tree here and some red leaves. And I'll just crank up the saturation and the brightness. And then some of the leaves down in here didn't get caught by the red. So... I'm just going to use the eyedropper and crank those colors up and the luminance. And then I can shift those to be more red, like so. Now let's add a quick special effect. A uh, soft focus, maybe about there looks good. And then we'll bring in some micro contrast so we can see a little bit more detail. Maybe some fine contrast, a little bit of global contrast. Okay, looking good. Now let's see if we can bring some of the sky back in. So I'm going to use the local adjustments. And 
They have a masking brush as well, but with these fine trees and everything, this is fine. Just for a quick edit. And let's pull the highlights down. That looks good. Maybe a little bit of clear view. And let's uh, add a little vibrancy there. Okay. And the last thing I can do is I can make this look a little bit more like fall by selecting the greens and shifting them to be yellow, like so. Maybe about right there. Now, DxO has a really comprehensive database for lenses and cameras to do the optical corrections. And in this case, I'm using the 8mm fisheye from Olympus. So I can correct that fisheye effect by just applying the optical correction like so. And then um, let me put this into a black and white using one of their presets. Uh, this one is good, nice and punchy. Let me crop it in a bit. About, let's do about right there. Now I'm going to use the channel mixer. This is really good for black and whites. I'm going to pull in the yellow because there's a lot of yellow and orange over here. Let's try and throw in some reds too. There. All right, now let's take a look at this uh, retouching tool and what they've done here. You can see my head is kind of popping in here at the top and I have a finger here on this fisheye lens. So it's kind of ruining the effect, right? So what I'm gonna do is just uh, try and fix it by brushing my head out like this. But you can see that it's gonna be hard even if I do clone or I click on repair doesn't quite do exactly what I want. So I'm going to do clone and now they have this uh, transform source and what I can do is just rotate this now so that it matches better with what I'm trying to fix. And I'll bring this in just a little bit more. There, perfect. Now let's fix my finger. So let's draw a new brush and I'll just do that. So not only can you kind of transform the shape, but you can just flip it. So since this is a circle, all I have to do is pick something on the parallel side, go to the transform and click flip. That's almost there. So let me move it back a tiny bit. And we're done. Now I'm going to show you a few before and afters of the D prime and D prime XD and compare them against each other. But I wanted to walk you through the settings in Photolab 6 Elite because you only get D prime XD with the Photolab 6 Elite with some additional settings that you cannot do in say the separate D prime or pure raw module that they sell. And this is why I bought the Photolab 6 Elite rather than the DxO pure raw. So first thing I'll do is uh, we're going to edit this image and you can see it's a 25,000 ISO on my Olympus Pen F. And I'm just going to apply the optics uh, corrections first. And then I'm going to raise the exposure by about three stops. That's close enough. And now I'm just going to click on uh, D prime XD. And if you look in the preview window, you can see it takes a second, but you can see it did a really, really good job already. I mean, I can almost read the letters five, four, two, four, it looks like. And then if we go over here, let's click on the preview box. You can clearly read the name here now. And if I click on the box, it shows the before without any uh, denoising. And if I let go, it shows me after. Now, just below this, you know, we can slide the luminance so that it applies less denoising. Or I can crank it up over here where it applies more denoising. 
So right around, you know, the default setting of 40 or 50, if I click on this, it'll uh, try and automatically calculate. But this looks pretty good. And what I like to do is just check sort of these uh, empty spaces here and see if it got rid of all the noise. And it really didn't. There's still a little bit here. So I'm just going to crank this up a little bit. Maybe a little more. Now, let me go back over here where I can read the lettering. And there's another slider here for dead pixels. I like to turn this off. And then the slider here, the noise model, if I slide this over to the left, it's going to try and extract less detail. So you'll get a little smoother image. And if I slide this to the right, it's going to try and extract even more detail. Now in a very high ISO messy image like this, it's best to dial this down a little bit. And I like to dial it down about minus 50, maybe a little bit more on this image. Because if you look at the paint here, it's not completely smooth. Let me move it over, say, to here. You can see some lines and things here in the paint, which probably aren't there in real life. So that's why I dial this down. If I crank this all the way over to the right, you see what happens is it's going to try and extract too much detail. And then I start getting artifacts because, again, this image is so noisy that I think it's extrapolating from some of the noise what, what it thinks might be detail. So in very high ISO images, I like to dial this down, you know, 50, 60, something like that, to whatever looks right. Now let me just do a quick white balance check. And then we'll export this, and you can see the before and after. most people agree that the AI noise reduction D prime and D prime XD is pretty amazing. And uh, it's really been a game changer for my photography, especially because I shoot micro four thirds. Now that said, that's not the only reason I like photo lab. There's so many other features in the software that, you know, I just don't have time to go over, but there's uh, smart lighting and clear view and a lot of the other special effects that I didn't touch on. And just the overall intuitive nature of the color wheel and other controls have made this my primary photo editor for everything that I do. Now, with that said, I do want to address a couple of issues that may or may not concern you. One is PhotoLab itself does not directly import your photos. You need to be able to bring your photos in using something as simple as your file manager or something more sophisticated like a third-party data asset management software. The other issue, and really it's a limitation, is that the AI Noise Reduction Prime, Deep Prime, and Deep Prime XD only work with the camera's original raw image, so .orf, .cr2, etc. You're not going to be able to use the AI noise reduction, say, like on a JPEG. Now, I think that's a fair trade-off, considering the amount of noise reduction we get along with the amount of detail we can retain when the software has access directly to the raw image. Now, I highly encourage you to see this for yourself. I have my affiliate links down below so you can download a free trial, and I think you'll be as amazed as much as I was when I first tried it. And I've barely touched on all of the other features that PhotoLab has built in as a photo editor. And if you'd like to make some tutorials on that, just let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to do that. But either way, I appreciate you watching, and I hope to see you again soon.